But unfortunately today, what we see often in many realities of Christians who live around us is that we have people who are very confused. And in this confusion, what ends up happening is that people express their Christianity only in an outward expression. There's no real inner desire to know God, to be in relationship with Him. It's almost as if we were describing what is often called practical atheism. What does that mean, a practical atheism? They are not atheist in the way that they express with their words. They claim to be Christian. They talk about how it is that they love God. They express with their words how it is that they go to church and they pray. And yet, in reality, if you examine the inner part of the heart, inwardly, there is no knowledge of God. There is a public expression, but there is no private expression. This is why in the Gospel of Matthew, there's a heartbreaking statement that the Lord himself says. He says, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And God forbid that this should be the state of confusion that we are in, where we think that God is only calling us to be able to express our love and our desire for him only with lip service. God forbid that we should live a life where we're only having a public expression of our faith, but in reality, there is no love. This would be the equivalent of, imagine a husband and a wife, who the husband is very kind and compassionate and very sweet to his wife whenever they are in public. Whenever they are in public, he, has, he, he publicly demonstrates that he loves her, he puts his arm around her, he holds her very close to him, he raises her up in the way that he speaks about her very highly in public, but behind closed doors, doesn't speak to her, completely neglects her, doesn't give her any form of affection or praise, and there's only a public expression. Imagine the state of toxicity that would exist in that relationship. The confusion for the wife who wants to ask her husband, why do you praise me publicly but privately? It's as if I don't exist. You can see how that relationship then can be clearly described as a broken relationship. And this is not the state that we were called for when it comes to the relationship that we want to have with God. This oftentimes can be seen as, again, like we had said earlier, mistaking the means for the end. Some of the means that we have to be able to show that we are in relationship with God or that we desire to have a, a real deep relationship with God is the fact that we might pray, the fact that we might fast or open scripture and read the word of God. The fact that many of us in an orthodox setting or if you belong to a church where you have liturgical prayers, we go to the church, we attend the Bible studies, we attend the liturgical prayers, we do all of these things and these are all wonderful things. But I want to be able to share a warning with all of us, including myself. While I do these outward expressions, I might be doing them for their sake and not for the sake of real relationship. This is where sometimes we mistake the means for the end. And we ought to never confuse the expression for the experience. What do I mean by this? Well, let's go back to the example of the husband and the wife. The expression that the husband has towards his wife publicly is one where, again, he speaks highly of her, he praises her, he tells her publicly that he loves her. All of these are expressions. It's how it is that he communicates. And yet, in the real life experience... There is no relationship between them. They don't speak to each other behind closed doors. He doesn't consider her in any which way. And so because of this, there seems to be an outward expression, but there is no real experience. Now imagine what this would translate into when it comes to the reality of the spiritual relationship. It is as if, and here you have the example of the image that you have on the screen. Imagine, if you wish, that you have mastered the art of peeling the orange. But you never actually participate in eating the sweet fruit that is there. You've peeled it, you've shown everybody that you like oranges, and yet you never actually eat the orange. You don't participate in what you were intending to do. The means, which is to peel, is supposed to lead you to the end goal, which is to enjoy the fruit. And yet, sometimes we do this. People will go to liturgy, they'll attend. People will pray, they'll open scripture. People will fast. They'll follow the canons of the church. They'll do all of these wonderful things. And yet it never actually leads them to real relationship. You know who was like this? The Pharisees. The Pharisees had over 600 laws that they chose to obey. And they were very, very strict. 
We had a lot of integrity in making sure that they followed all 600 of those laws. Some of them were laws of Moses, others were laws that they themselves introduced. I believe they were 613 laws, if I'm not mistaken. They would follow those 600 plus laws. And yet, when the Lord Himself was manifest, when He was incarnate and revealed Himself to them, when they met the person of Jesus, who is the Word of God Himself, who is the Son of God, they didn't recognize Him. Why? Because they never knew Him. There was never any real relationship. They followed the laws. They went through the motions. They peeled the orange. But they never tasted the fruit. And so when Him who presented Himself, in order for them to know that God has come to them, that the Messiah is not simply a prophet, but rather He is God incarnate Himself, when they met the person of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, they couldn't recognize Him as the ones, as the one that they were supposedly being obedient to. He who is the lawgiver was not recognized, even though they were supposedly law-abiding. God forbid that this should be the state of our hearts when we ourselves meet the Lord.